and they get buried on their desk. Well, not usually, because the people that get the bills are generally, I mean, won't be cares. responsible. Nobody no cares responsible. I know you guys. Yeah. Uh, relatively speaking. That's our lie. We're sticking to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's weird. Because I just, when the new bills are issued, I have to review them. And I think I saw the last payment was January 20, I don't remember what. So. I work for free. It is true. I don't know. I'm sure it's the township council. <coughs> Wait, my no, probably not. Oh, yeah? No. <laughs> no take backs. You didn't say how much you would work. Do I have this too? Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's under here. Some of them we don't care about. The accidents we don't care about. No. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, the Township of Whitehall regular public meeting of the Board of Commissioners will now come to order. After the Pledge of Allegiance, I would like to uh, observe a moment of silence for uh, Ulysses Connor, um, who was a member of our Rail Trail Commission, was, uh, always did a great job for us there, and for Jeff Gerhardt, who is the Operations Manager of the Copley Whitehall Sewer Authority. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Whitehall Township has an obligation to affirmatively <coughs> further fair housing and to review all land use applications in accordance with federal civil rights statutes. This includes taking meaningful actions that overcome patterns of segregation and foster inclusive communities free from barriers that restrict access to opportunity based on protected characteristics. The Township in its land use decisions does not discriminate against persons based on race, color, national origin, religion, sex, disability, or familial status and reviews all land use applications in accordance with federal civil rights statutes. Public comments made on the basis of bias and stereotype concerning people within these protected classes will not be taken into consideration by the Township in its deliberations. I uh, take a motion to approve the minutes of the regular public meeting of March 11th, 2019. I'll make that motion. I'll I have second a second. It. Jeff? Any comments or questions from the board? Hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. I think that was Mr. Marks. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's an aye, yes. That's and a yes. Second was Jeff. 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 And you're okay. Aye. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Clary. Aye. Commissioner Ginder. Yes. Commissioner Sloniker. Aye. And President Hauer. <coughs> Abstain as I was not present. Eyes, one abstention. Would that be five eyes? Five. 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 Yeah, I'm sorry, forgot the first one. <laughs> Too much grammar. Okay, uh, public hearing and voting on uh, liquor license transfer resolution number 3057. A resolution approving the transfer of Pennsylvania restaurant liquor license number R 1451 to Sheets Incorporated. Claysburg, PA, for use at 5001 MacArthur Road, Whitehall Township, Lehigh County, Pennsylvania. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Well, it's a hearing. Do I have a second? Just be yeah, if the wait till yeah. we get it on. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second it just to get it on the table. Okay. okay uh, Understand there's people in the audience to uh, present. Hi, good evening. I'm the attorney for Sheets. I thought I'd start out with a presentation if that's all right. Sure. 
Great, thank you. Can My you name please, is. I'm sorry. Could you state your name and the firm, whoever you work yes. for, and address? My name is oh, Ellen yeah. Freeman. I'm the attorney with Flaherty and O'Hara, and we represent <laughs> Sheets in all of their requests for liquor license transfers. And we are here tonight because of the public well, hearing. Just hold on a second. Oh, I think you need to be sure. sworn in. Oh, sure. I do. Sure. Thank you. Great, thank you. So we are here tonight because of section 461B3 of the Liquor Code, which simply mandates that a public hearing shall be had in order for residents of the municipality to present their comments and recommendations to the board on Sheets' intention to operate a liquor license within Whitehall Township. Um, as your president mentioned, this would be for use at their location at 5001 MacArthur Road. Uh, this is not Sheets' first liquor license. This is actually, um, they have over 150 liquor licenses now in Pennsylvania, um, and they have over a decade of operations spanning in, in Pennsylvania. So they've been able to really hone in on their safety policies and procedures to make sure that they're operating a liquor license in each muni municipality in the safest manner possible. Uh, they first obtained a liquor license in 2004. And all of the liquor licenses that they have in Pennsylvania have the same configuration of their stores as well as their policies and procedures. So if you've ever been to a Sheets location with a liquor license, that would be the same model that they wish to bring to Whitehall Township. I'll go ahead and pass out at this point a floor plan. We can just label that Applicants Exhibit 1. That's uh, the only exhibit I have this evening. And it will give you an idea of how Sheets will reconfigure their store in order to add a liquor license and those features. Now as you get that in front of you and if you're familiar with the Sheets in Whitehall Township, they will be adding seating for up to 30 patrons. That will be where the main entrance is, is sort of off to the left-hand corner, um, and the seating will be just off to the right of that. Uh, they will be expanding the store slightly in order to include this seating, um, and that seating will be there for patrons to consume their meals um, from Sheets' MTO made-to-order menu, uh, which will still be intact there. And then just off to the right of the seating, they'll uh, introduce a beer cave to this location. And that's where all of their cold beer will be located. So this is, if you're familiar with any of the other sheets, it's a, a walk-in cooler uh, where they'll have their six packs and 12 packs featured there. You must be 21 to enter. And as you enter, there will be a camera pointing in your face so that you're well aware that you are being monitored um, by the staff and by their centralized system. There will also be um, some cold beer doors which will be located just adjacent to the beer cave and that's where the single uh, servings of beer will be located in which you can do a mix of six. You can get a six pack and do six different types of beer. Sheets under their liquor license is only permitted to sell 192 fluid ounces of beer to go in one single transaction. Um, which is roughly two six packs, depending on the configuration of the ounces of beer that you are purchasing. In terms of wine, there will be one wine shelf, which will be located close to, to the beer uh, in the beer cave, and um, that will all be warm wine. There won't be any chilled wine. Um, in terms of wine to go sales, they'll be permitted 3,000 milliliters of wine to go, roughly four standard bottles of wine. Every single transaction, if you wish to purchase any alcohol at the Sheets, you will be carded by an associate, um, no matter what your age. And this simply removes all the gray area of, of carding and making sure that someone is 21 years or older. Um, it protects not only the municipality and the residents, but it also protects the associates um, from, again, not having to make a judgment call. Each of the associates that work within the Sheets, once a liquor license is obtained, will go through RAMP training. And if you're not familiar with RAMP, that's the Responsible Alcohol Management Program developed by the Bureau of Liquor Control Enforcement. And it teaches associates how to properly handle the sale of alcohol. So it goes through how to properly card a patron, what to look for if you're trying to spot a fake ID, 
how to use a card scanner transaction device, which will be, again, used in every single sale. Um, so every single ID will be read through a card scanning device in order to determine that that ID is not fraudulent, and again, to verify the birth date to make sure that patron is 21 years or older. Um, the training also goes through a number of different uh, hypotheticals with, a, with a, an associate in order for them to spot a visibly intoxicated person. And more importantly, how to decline a sale when that person is either visibly intoxicated or has presented a fake ID. The Sheets is currently open 24-7, but the alcohol sales will be limited. They will be Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 1.45 a.m. and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 1.45 a.m. At 1.45 a.m. each morning, the associates have been trained to lock the beer cave and lock each of the cold beer doors. That way, any patron that comes in will not be able to access any of that alcohol. Furthermore, their registers won't be able to scan any of the SKUs of the beer and wine after those hours, so they are physically locked out from selling anything past that hour. As I mentioned, there are security cameras. There are currently um, many located within the sheets um, at this time. They'll reassess, they'll take a look at all their security cameras to make sure that all of the alcohol product is being monitored by one of them as well as they're going to make sure that there are security cameras that focus directly on the register for every single transaction to be caught on camera. Um, now, each sheets is actually equipped with a CSO monitor, which is their central security operations system. So actually, even in the sheets there today, each of the sheets associates has a lanyard and an earpiece. And the lanyard has a button on it. And what they can do with that button is they're able to press it in any any situation that they feel as though they need backup from their central system. Once they click that button, their central security operation system is able to key into the monitors and see what's going on in that particular store. So for example, if they notice that someone has um, put alcohol or any product really into a purse <coughs> or a coat, they're able to push that system and instead of calling the police themselves, the CSO system can phone the police and not escalate the situation. Um, they can do it in a more quiet manner in order to not alarm the store and not to disrupt um, to a point where it could escalate into something further. Um, so that's in place today. Uh, they certainly monitor it even more when they have alcohol sales within each of their stores. <coughs> Sheets is a leading example. As I mentioned, they've been operating since 2004. Um, they have had a citation in the past, that was in 2007, that was a sales to a minor. And what they did is they took that very seriously and they rechanged all of their policies and made them even more stringent. And since 2007, they have not had any violation of the liquor code. So they've not been cited for a sales to minor, sales to intoxicated person, or any other violation of the liquor code. They have had a perfect record for 12 years. And they really want to bring that perfect record to each municipality that they serve. Um, they have a reputation in each municipality, and they don't want it to be infringed upon by any haphazard sale of alcohol. Um, so with that, I will turn it back over to the Board of Commissioners, and of course, any residents who wish to comment, um, happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Any uh, comments from the Board? Yeah, I just have one. Sure. <clears throat> Will there be signage in the premises and out in the parking area alerting the patrons that they are not to consume alcohol in the parking area? They can only consume it inside the bullpen? Yeah, they, well, they just recently, I know in the correspondence that we had sent you, we mentioned that there would be on-premises consumption. Sheets has just recently in the past months changed their policy where they won't allow for any consumption on premises whatsoever. So there will be signage inside. I'm not sure on the outside, but I'd be happy to talk to my client and I'm sure that's something that they would be able to, to post outdoors as and, well. And the reason why I bring this up, last week I was quoted by the press. That sheet tends to be the Whitehall drive-in in the warmer months of the year. And my concern is even if they may be of age, we have a lot of racers, call it what it is, that park there and we even requested a list from the mayor, from our police chief, on how many violations were reported in the last calendar year. My concern is introducing alcohol into that situation could end up catastrophic. 
for the safety of our citizens and whatever. Now, I know that we're not going to stop this, but all I ask is that you be as diligent as possible, and our police are going to be as diligent as possible to make sure that no alcohol is consumed on the property so someone doesn't go out and get hurt or in turn. And I do appreciate it. I did see the, the quote, um, and I, I took the opportunity to, to reach out to the police department. I spoke with uh, Lieutenant Beeman? Bueller. Bueller. Yeah. And um, he and I spoke at length about the loitering that happens in that Sheets. And, I, and then I reached out to Sheets themselves to see if I could get some type of answer from them. Um, and what I had spoken to the lieutenant about is that the fact that the managers on duty, some of them are really great about calling the police, others are not. So I asked our client to reach out to them to ensure that there's consistency across the board, that if there is a large group of people corralling in the parking lot, that it be phoned into the police. Um, because as I understand it, um, since it's Sheets' property, the police don't do anything until Sheets does reach out to them. So it's something I've addressed with them. Um, and again, I just, you know, we'll, we'll have to move forward and, and hope that it get, gets corrected in the future. It has been reiter re reiterated back to the client. Is, is Chief Marks present tonight? He is. Chief? Uh, if one of our patrol vehicles is just going through the parking lot and he sees an open container, can, can the patron be charged with open container law? Yes. Okay. So we have a means to police this? Yes. Okay. Even if we're not called? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the only thing, uh, like she stated, we can't go on to their property and say who belongs and who doesn't. That's up to the manager. Okay. But I mean, if we're on routine patrol and we run into a situation where there are people drinking on the premises, they can be charged with open container or, or whatever. Okay. Chief, I don't want you to sit down since you're already up. <laughs> um, looking at the list, there's 51 total reports, so basically one a week at this yeah. location. I know yeah. I don't realize some are more serious than others. Um, is that a lot? For, for, a, for a business along MacArthur Road? No. No, one of our, one of our uh, major stores here in the township, I think, drew us there last year 927 times. Well, that, I think you and I both know who they were talking about there, and that <laughs> Probably. building is way bigger than this sheets. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I guess my, my concern, my concern is that um, we have a number of issues. At least uh, I think once a week is too many. It's my opinion, but. Um, if we're, going to, if we're going to add alcohol to this situation, especially in the summer months, like, like uh, Commissioner Marks had said earlier, um, I am concerned that people are going to go in and get these six packs and come out and drink them in the parking lot. I think there's, there's no doubt that that's going to happen. And in looking at the number of complaints that we've gotten there already, I don't think that, I, I guess I, I don't have a lot of confidence that uh, the management team there is going to come and do uh, or do what they're, they're supposed to do and call the police department. My second concern is there is that you know our police department's already overworked when we have one location that has 900 calls in a year. Um, to add a number of calls to this location, I think is is tr it's troublesome to me. But I'll let the rest of the commissioners speak. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? I, I do have a question about uh, security. How does the Whitehall sheets? outdoor cameras compared to other stores and is there any plans to beef that up um, I think signage is a, a deterrent for just even the the um, hangouts if they know they're on video they're gonna behave themselves I, I don't recall ever seeing any signs there saying this, this property is under video surveillance I don't know about the signs in general um, certainly that's something that can be addressed with with Sheets. Um, Sheets is always willing to put up signs, no loitering, you're on camera, things of that nature um, to help the township out. In terms of their video cameras, every time that they renovate a store, um, particularly with a liquor license and particularly with one that doesn't already have seating inside of it, um, they reevaluate their security cameras and they make sure that they, are, they have the most up-to-date security systems as well as that they're pointing in every direction where they feel that it needs to be directed. Um, Sheets is also very willing to work with the police department in terms of the directions of the cameras. Um, sometimes the people at Sheets' corporate office don't know nearly as well as the police department. So it's something they're very willing to work hand in hand with the township to make sure that every party is happy. So the, to the question about the cameras outside, mm -hmm. um, I'm familiar with the Sheets, I live close to there, but on the one side there's no windows whatsoever. So. <coughs> 
if kids are sitting out there with open containers drinking their six pack that they just bought in the store, and you're telling me that everybody, every management or every every uh, associate in the store has a little button that they can go and remotely call in their security, they're not going to see that what's happening outside. Well, and that's that's something I don't know exactly where the cameras are pointed. I assume that you're talking about where the trash is off to the yes, left. Yes, off, off on the left. Yeah, yeah, yeah off to the right. From MacArthur Road at at the building on the left hand side. Um, so who would call the police or who would who would call your central monitoring system to report that? It, it is mo each of the sheets are monitored from their security, their central security operation system. So if someone at their central system saw it, they would either phone the manager or phone the police themselves. Um, if there's not a camera pointing there now, that's certainly something that they can do to add a camera there. I think it would be a good idea because again, if there's nobody that can no, nobody inside the sheets is going to be able to see through that concrete wall. So maybe you could. Maybe, uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. I do, I only have one question. You you're saying the CSO that they they have specifically watching for something going on. It's not the people that are actually in the store. That that's correct. Accurate? It's no one from the store that's sitting inside of the store monitoring right. the cameras. It's a headquarters um, where they'll be monitoring those. Yeah, and the other question is, I, you know, and like Commissioner Howard said, like we have right outside the wall there, but I think also along the, along MacArthur Road, there's also an area there. I don't know what the camera situation is closer to MacArthur Road. I, I, I don't know the answer okay. to that right off and the And that would be another concern that I would have that, you know, if they knew there were cameras certain spots, then they go other places to hang out, you know, and I think that... I think we're all under the impression that we want to make sure that when it happens, because we're, we're all confident that it's going to happen, uh, that there's a way of policing that. So, uh, the, you know, having cameras you know, further away from the store, not just located on the store. Sure. And, and that's something that, you know, a dialogue can be opened in regards to those security cameras. I mean, all I can reiterate today is that they are always willing to work with the police departments and the municipalities. They don't want to come in and cause your police department any additional grief. Um, and they certainly don't want, again, a reputation for having a location that is particularly bad in a municipality. Because when we then go to another municipality, um, and let's say it's a neighboring municipality, and they contact Whitehall Township, we want Whitehall Township to say, no, Sheets has been excellent. They put in the cameras, they put in the signs, and they've been working with us ever since. Um, so it's something they want across the board. As part of the facility upgrade in general, um, we have a residential driveway that's adjacent to the property. I'd, I'd like to see some cameras added to that area so you can see cars, maybe get a license plate exiting, but also see anybody that would tend to walk up in, into that residential neighborhood that. I don't know if the residents have had problems there in the past, but. Um, yeah, I'll have to check with them on, on how they would be able to do that just to make sure that with their landlord and with the property that they're permitted to do so. Um, but again, that's something that we can certainly discuss. I think the concern that we have, and I'm sure people in the gallery here, when in the past you would see younger adults or whatever, maybe younger, they'd be in at Sheets, they'd leave, and then they'd use MacArthur Road as a, eh, let's see how fast my motorcycle can go. Let's see how fast my car can go against yours. And now you're putting alcohol with something that already exists with that. And that's, a, that's my concern, that you're gonna have people, and I understand you, you train people to see who might be intoxicated. But there's that point where they're not to intoxicated yet, but they still don't have the judgment that they should have. And that's part of the reason I, I see the location from just living up in the Egypt area, and you go up there at night, and these cars are passing you at 85, 90 miles per hour, and that includes motorcycles too. So you, it's, not, it's not just oh, it's just alcohol, I think it's the combination. At least that's what I see, and again, just one guy's opinion here on the board. Okay, thank you. Um, I had spoken with some people in, uh, in the area, and for your information, and, and as I passed along to the manager, one of the people told me that they have found 
patrons down there now with <clears throat> without beer or alcohol sitting on their back porch eating things that they had just bought down the street. So you, you're going to need to make sure that you're policing that area very carefully. And I would ask that during the development process for this that you work closely with our development office and make sure that we have adequate policing down there because of the cameras. I'd also point out that the manager, uh, in response to my concern about the amount of debris that's been coming off of that area, uh, has volunteered that uh, he would be willing to have his people go out and collect the trash off of Chestnut Street. And I would expect that on a regular basis that would happen. So um, just a, f a few comments about the interactions I've had. And just in, in response to that, um, I should mention that even if you all approve this this evening, that's not the end of the road for Sheets, certainly. Um, one of the things that they'll have to come back is for any development, any permit that they need in order to add this seating, if there's any zoning or use changes, they'll be back in front of Whitehall Township, um, certainly to have that conversation and dialogue. And um, you know, I will let them know that they need to get in contact with the police department about their security cameras. But in addition to that, getting approval for the redevelopment, they still have to go through the Liquor Control Board as well. Um, so they still have that lengthy process of going through. And the Liquor Control Board does survey the area as well um, to ensure that it wouldn't disrupt the health, welfare, peace, and morals of the municipality within um, the surrounding area. So. They, this isn't the end of the road for them, and, and, and they know that there's still a lot more conversation to be had on the subject. I just have one more question. You, you talked about this bullpen area with tables. Yes. Why are they going to provide tables if no alcohol will be consumed on the premises? It's what, a requirement what? under the liquor code. Oh, it is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, for the restaurant liquor license, they have to have it seating for at least 30 patrons. Okay. And hopefully with the seating of 30 patrons, they won't be using people's backyards anymore. Maybe that would be an enticement to actually sit down and have the meal where they're But they have to be currently. 21 years old to go into the bullpen, correct? No, no, oh, they, they don't do need to. Okay. No, this is, I mean, this is the same type of liquor license that your Applebee's would get. So okay. um, 21, anyone under 21 is still permitted to be in that seating area and to sit and enjoy a meal as well. I think it's that's a ridiculous requirement. And for, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to get too far in the weeds, but we had a, yeah. another, we had a, we had another supermarket that came here and will remain nameless, and they said we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to have a restaurant, and it's not a restaurant. There's pre-wrapped hoagies. It's not a restaurant. It's yeah, I mean, place. unfortunately, under the liquor code, there's no right. liquor license. For I don't want to get off convenience the stores. You had a question, comments? Yeah, I agree with pretty much what the other commissioners have have said. Uh, now, what we're voting on tonight is only the liquor license transfer. That's correct. Yeah. Prepare the owners up there that when they come in for permits and stuff, I think a serious conversation needs to be held with security inside and outside. I took my notes. Without question. And that security tied in with what our police chief said says is, is proper and needed for this not to be detrimental to any of the neighbors. And I promise the first time one of these neighbors has a bunch of drunks running through their neighborhood, uh, the hammer will come down. They, they take their role in, in the municipality very seriously. Um, I think you'll be pleased with the conversation that you have with them in terms of security cameras and the placement and their willingness to cooperate. Just let fair warning be. We're not, we're not going to have a mess up there. It's, it's bad enough with the racing and stuff, and, and I understand that stuff would happen. The police can't be everywhere all the time. But it's not going to get any worse. Okay. Not to Thank beat you. a dead horse, it's, you know, the reason that you see so many residents here is because we already have a problem, and adding alcohol to this <laughs> is going to make, in our opinion, more of a problem. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, we... We have a courtesy of the floor. I know everybody signs all this up, but I think we'll just go through the list, and if you would like to speak on this issue, just this issue only, we'll go with you first. You okay with that? Great. Just one more clarification. You did say that in the first packet we received, it said there would be consumption on site, but now Sheets has x that out. Yes. There will, there, Sheets is only selling beer and wine to go. I will just put this on the record. If, by law, they have to sell for on-premises consumption, 
they will put a limit on that on-premises consumption. They used to, in the past, in their other locations, they had on-premises consumption, <coughs> beer only, and it was a limit of two. Um, like I said, they did away with that policy recently, and they are going with absolutely no consumption on-premises. However, there's a little bit of a gray area in the law right now of whether the Liquor Control Board will come back and say it's an absolute must. Um, Can and you in which explain why that would be at this point? Sure. So um, it goes back to a Supreme Court case um, which had to do with one of the, the larger supermarkets obtaining a liquor license. And many of the beer distributors were protesting their liquor li license, saying that they weren't a bona fide eating place uh, restaurant. Um, and so what the Supreme Court said was, it is inherent in your liquor license that you must sell for on-premises consumption. However, that was an eating place liquor license. This is a restaurant liquor license. There are differences between the two under the liquor code. And under the liquor code, an eating place license specifically says on-premises consumption, whereas a restaurant liquor license does not. But the Liquor Control Board has not weighed down one way or the other whether they're going to treat a restaurant liquor license the same way they'll treat an eating place liquor license. So a little bit of a gray area. Sheets doesn't feel as though the definition of a restaurant liquor license warrants that you have to have on-premises consumption. So they've done away with it as it was so limited at their other locations that they didn't feel it was necessary to have to have it at their locations and police that. So why wouldn't we want to know the determination before the board would vote? What I can yes. what I can say is that we could certainly add that into the resolution of if by law Sheets has to sell for on-premises consumption, they'll send written notice to the township and they'll continue to put their cap on that on-premises consumption of two beers per person, um, a limit, a max on it. Aside from that, it's, it's difficult for me to say one way or the other because while we feel we, as a, we have a very strong case against it, um, I can't say for certain that a year down the road the law won't change and they won't have to have on-premises consumption by law. Ms. Murray, yes. are we emboldened to vote on this? Because at this point, we don't know if they're going to consume alcohol in the premises. And I don't want to base my vote, and this is just my personal stand, on, I mean, you, you told us one thing, but now you're telling, that, telling us there's a possibility it may be another. Well, I mean, our hands are tied until the Liquor Control Board comes down one way or the other. Well, I, but I, can you appreciate my stand and, and the situation we're put in? You're asking me to vote on something that may not be true at this point. Which is why I would say to put in the resolution that we have to come back and, and give written notice to the township. I believe under the um, liquor code, and you, you know it much better than I do, that we have to hold a hearing and vote within 45 days of receiving the application. That's correct. And otherwise, it's a deemed approval. So if we would not vote tonight, it'd be deemed to be approved. So, and actually, I think 45 days is then a week or two. It's from the date that we send in the right. request. Right, and it came in in, I don't know, April, early March. It came in right around the time of our April workshop, I believe. Anybody, anything else up here? Okay, we'll go through the uh, courtesy of the floor. Thomas Smith. Let's put the microphone down. Bring the microphone down. Yeah. You just want it here? Just sit on the table, please. Okay, sure. Thomas, T H O M A S W Smith, S M I T H. And for our, I'm sorry, for our records, uh, could you please give us your address? So 5521 Bayberry Lane. Thank you. <coughs> Yeah, well, <coughs> my wife and I have, my wife and I, uh, because we've lived there now since October of 2015, and which is right behind the Sheets gas station, and one of one of the things we thought about prior to purchasing 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 the home was the Sheets gas station, but and other than 
a excessive <coughs> amount of noise, mostly on Friday and Saturday nights, uh, especially during the high school football season and whatnot. And, and like you remarked about nice weather, there seems to be more and more lo lo because uh, 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 kids are loitering there. Uh, <clears throat> back in uh, 2017, at when we had our HOA meeting, and because we discussed, we discussed because of noise, at that time, because the builder, Sir Ken Snyder, went down and sparked has spoke to Travis down at the Sheets gas station. And I don't know whether or not Travis is there any, any longer, but uh, this is what was said there. You can see this. Um, and uh, unfortunately, because the issue with the noise uh, at times has been better, but then at other times it gets extremely bad at which time the homeowners call the police and within, oh, I'm gonna say so 15 minutes, the police come through, the crowd disperses, and the noise goes away. But it hasn't solved the problem and bringing in alcohol, uh, when there are places right around <coughs> Sheets that have beer sales, uh, so Lurie Station, they have a distributorship there. Tanzas has a, uh, so Corn Fines Market, Weiss Market, because the beer man, uh, they have to all be within a three mile radius of Sheets, Sheets' gas station. Uh, I, I just don't, I just don't see any, see any reason for Sheets to sell beer. Uh, not when they already have an issue. I mean, like there are times that alongside the north perimeter parking spots of Sheets Gas Station facing Egypt, I've counted anywhere from a half dozen or more cars parked <coughs> side by side. They, because they crank down their windows they crank up their stereos because to the same radio station, and I can literally hear the music, the lyrics, in our house. Uh, you know, it, it just bringing alcohol to a to a problem that already is there, that since 2017 hasn't really been solved. Uh, you're just asking for more trouble. You're, you're just asking for more problems. And uh, as far as sheets, sheets cameras, and they're patrolling their parking lot, that hasn't worked. Uh, now you may have another system to go in place once this alcohol because it's present, but I. I I don't picture it working. And back in 2016, there was a police problem down at Sheets Gas Station with a gentleman so with a machete. That was in September of 2016, so I believe. I was able to look it up, but I'm not I'm not because computer savvy, because I couldn't print, because I couldn't, because I, because I could not so print the article out. And then I also know about a year and a half ago, the sheets on 248 in Palmer Township tried to get because of beer license, and that <coughs> was denied. And one of the reasons in the articles was because of the ongoing problem with loitering. Now, I don't know what the answer is, but I don't think liquor, because will help. Um, and also, just like they said before, with the garbage, 
there is a lot of a lot of waste that blows around because our neighborhood comes up the bank from sheets. Luckily, the weeds are pretty high now, so that's kind of stopping some of it. But uh, yeah, like sheets, like sheets hasn't been a good neighbor uh, because in our almost four years living here now, I only recall them so cutting the bank and the weeds one time. Uh, I just, you know, I'm sure some of the other homeowners probably have more to say about it, but I believe that unless we can see, uh, see because a real downturn in maybe the next three years as far as excessive noise, I don't think, so I don't think the beer license is a very good idea at all. Not when there's all these other places to get beer, if you choose to do that. Thank you. Linda Stewart. I do all at once, I would think. So you want me to read all the names? Okay. Linda Stewart, Anna Smith, Angela Patterson, Carol, and I can't make out the last name. Head slap. That sound right? Okay. And. Gerald Neal, Barbara Krimp, fifty five twenty five Briar Lane, whoever lives I there. Trust what was that? It doesn't even have a C in there. Keith <laughs> <laughs> Albright <laughs> and Elizabeth Albright. That's what we have for courtesy of the floor. Hey, we understand if you want to if you want to testify, please stand. We'll swear you in so you can testify. Linda Stewart. <coughs> Linda, L-I-N-D-A, Stewart, S-T-E-W-A-R-T. -E I just want to reiterate what Tom said, that there's, Sheets has been a nuisance, and adding alcohol to a nuisance doesn't seem like a good idea. It's, and I hear, I live up above <coughs> where Tom lives, and I hear them going out of the Sheets parking lot and racing up the road. And a lot of times they're drag racing up the road, more than one at a time. And somebody's going to get killed. That's, unless something changes for the better. You know, it's just, that's, it's not a good idea. <laughs> I just don't think it's a good idea. Thank, Thank you. you. Anna Smith. A-N-N-A-S-M-I-T-H. Can I ask you some questions? I'm not going to answer. Not yet. Of course you can. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> of the complaints that you've had, how many of them were from the Sheets employees themselves? We, we don't have that. that okay. It's, it's just how many, well, what we asked for last week was how many times the police were called to okay. the actual um, sheets itself. And like I said, that, that's as many calls that they, that they received, but I'm sure there was much more going on that wasn't reported. Right. Wasn't the, well, I can tell you that because I'm a neighbor also of sheets, and I don't patronize sheets at all anymore. I've lived here for three and a half years. I don't get gas there. I only get free air. <laughs> I will not spend a, a nickel at Sheets because they are not good neighbors. I don't believe that they're calling the police. It is possible, but I don't believe it because I can hear everything that's going on. And until 
one of the neighbors, unfortunately, who's not here, we've called together simultaneously, not knowing that the other had called when there was something going on that was outrageous, um, like a leaf blower <laughs> had their motor running for, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, then we finally called. It was, I mean, it's, you can fe feel the vibrations in our homes from these noises that are going on. And both of us had called at the same time. We've had the drag racing and the squealing out of sheets. We have the synchronized music. We have the, I've been awakened in the middle of the night. I thought that there was an explosion at sheets and I have a disabled husband and that when I'm running out of my bed, I'm thinking, how am I going to get him out of the house? Because I'm thinking that there's an explosion at the Sheets gas station. It was a car with, I don't understand why the police can't cite these people who have cars that are outrageously loud. That's a question I have as well. They're outrageously loud before they rev their engines, and then they rev their engines to compare which is the loudest. The noise that we hear from sheets, the annoyances that we have from sheets, the disturbances that we have from sheets are deliberate. There are trucks that come and go and we don't hear them, or we hear them in a, in a very small way, and we're fine with that. We understand that we live near a main street. We understand that we live near a, a gas station. And there are motorcycles that come and go, and as we all know, motorcycles are, are louder than cars. We expect that. But we do not expect this gangs of people that are competing with each other for their loud engines that have to be illegal to begin with. And now they're revving them. And we're just trying to live our lives. We're just trying to relax at the end of the day and watch television or sleep through the night, if you'll excuse us for trying to do that yeah. in our homes. Mrs. Smith, can I ask you a question? The next, yes. Sorry. Um, you mentioned the truck traffic that's in that neighborhood, and that truck traffic has been a nightmare for this board. Are you? I don't have a problem it's, it's, with it. It seems like you're you're more upset about the issues going on at at the gas station. At the gas station, that is more deliberate. than the truck traffic. More than truck. I don't have a problem with the truck traffic. I understand that they're filling the 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 uh, quarries up there, mm -hmm. and they're coming continually. But they're really not that loud. Trucks are louder than cars. We all know that. Mm -hmm. But this is louder than a truck. This is not just a um, a vehicle that happens to make a lot of noise. This is a vehicle that is deliberately making a lot of noise. And I don't, I'm not going to add flowery language to this whole thing. Thank you for your flowery language. But we can intellectualize this away. My other question is, you are saying this is going to happen. They're going to get the license. Why can't you guys vote no? Are you not allowed to vote no? Are you not allowed to vote this license down? This, this is the transfer of a license. Yeah. It's not okay. a license. Can you vote no to transfer the license? That would be up to uh, our attorney. But the way I see it, it's in front of us, so I don't see why we couldn't vote no. Ms. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I think that the question or the, the comment was that we're not actually voting to approve sheets to have liquor sales there. Right now, they are just applying to transfer a liquor license to this store. I think it's your job, though, to make sure that there is peace in the community. Oh, there's no doubt. We're well aware of yeah, that. You need to be aware of that. And That's why I asked the question about the trucks, because the trucks have been a bane of our existence for the last, I don't know, five, okay, six well, years. And, and for, for your comment about the sheets being more of a nuisance than those trucks speaks volumes worse, to me. Much worse. Much worse. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Angela Patterson. <coughs> Thank you for the time to speak with you. You have to spell your name. Oh, A-N-G-E-L-A, P-A-T-T-E-R-S-O-N. Okay. Um, I also live in the community, in the Briarwood community behind Sheets. I live further up in the community and um, 
I don't have probably the noise, some of the noise issues that I think the lower end of our community have with sheets. I hear the trucks. So um, they start at five in the morning during the week and on the weekends. And you can hear them dumping and you can hear um, you know, them, them unloading. Um, I also just want to say about sheets, uh, I understand they're applying or they want to transfer this liquor license, but every time I leave my community, there are tons, I mean, at least five or six cars that I'm waiting for that are turning into sheets, either getting gas, getting breakfast, getting lunch, getting whatever. So I think if it's a matter of increasing their sales or, or you know, the money that they're making um, to have this liquor license, they are making a ton of money on gas and on food. And my concern is, um, I think as Tom said, there are, there are places in the surrounding area where you can get beer, but there are not places in the surrounding area that, sir, that are going to be able to, where you are going to be able to purchase alcohol, beer and wine until 1.45 in the morning. That's, I mean, that is asking for trouble especially right behind, a, right behind a development. And, you know, I've traveled the 81 corridor. Sheets has started out up in Penn State, and it's expanded, and it's all over the state. It's down south. Um, I've been to Virginia, and, and there's been a Sheets. Now, in the Sheets that I have um, stopped at along the way, are not, there is not a development that is right behind them. You know, we're just asking. I mean, we're a 55 and older community, you know, we, it, it, the noise is uh, disturbing from sheets, from the quarry, um, you know, and we purchased our homes thinking that it was going to be a place where it would be quiet and you could walk and feel comfortable and sleep at night or sleep late in the morning. But, you know, I finally have the opportunity to do that, <laughs> and I'm awakened by the, by the trucks in the, in the, in the quarry. But I'm just concerned about that and, and Sheets being able to sell um, alcohol till that, that hour of the morning. And I did want to ask, is this a Sheets that is family owned or is <coughs> this a privately owned Sheets? Family owned. Okay. Um, and I, you know, I, I'm just concerned. I'm, I'm concerned with that. And, um, and just know that there's a ton of traffic in and out of there already. <coughs> so, purchasing things, so. Thank you. I would hope that you'll consider our community when you make a decision. Carol Tetzloff? Tetzloff. Tetzloff, okay. You'll get to spell that, Carol. So <laughs> we'll all know. Carol, C A R O L. Tetzloff, T E T Z L A F F, Frank Frank. French fry. Okay. Um, yeah, I had some questions. Are there any. Uh, zoning ordinances as to how close you can have an establishment selling alcohol to residents. There's been occasions where the patronage at Sheets has walked up the hill into the backyards of my neighbors. Um, uh, also, if the building is going to have an addition, will the addition at all be coming closer to meeting our boundary, <coughs> property-wise. There's the hill up, yes, the, but- The, the uh, proposal um, is, is for it to come out of the front of the building towards the gas pumps. <coughs> oh, is it? Yeah, it's okay. If, are the tables going to be on the side where there's no windows? No, again, it's out of the, fr it's out of the front. It's all in the it, front. It's going to be facing uh, Chestnut Street. Okay. Um, Anything? Okay. Are the are there any time limits to how long people can sit at those tables, or could it be a Saturday night hanging for till the one forty-five in the morning? That's that would be. Yeah, I'll go ahead and answer that. So uh, they are permitted to sit down and have a meal there, and they are permitted to stay. Um, I wouldn't say as long as they want. She still does have a loitering policy themselves, where they're basically a congregation of, of individuals in their store or. Each of the associates knows the policy and knows the 
Um, if there's more surveillance cameras due to this, would there be more surveillance cameras due to this? I think yeah. she testified. Yes. There will likely be more surveillance cameras. And, al and along with that, would there be more lighting? Again, you have to address her. We, we would there really be more lighting? That's okay. Not a problem. Um, Just no, no. putting it out there. Yes, the, yes. The, the store will be well lit. Um, that's not my concern, excuse me. My concern is more lights. No, there, I don't believe that there will be any more lights indoors. I don't know about the outdoors unless it's something to do with so the township. If there's more surveillance <coughs> cameras, wouldn't they possibly need, need more bright lighting? That's that, something they'll have to consider. I can't say how much more lighting will be added. I think but that would be a consideration for some of my neighbors also. Uh, another question. Can the people at the tables have portable radios there? I, I, I would think that if it's any disruption with the machines, that's also within their littering policy. That's almost to not be permitted. Okay, I think that does it for me. I'll probably think of three more when I sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Gerald Neal. I think that's that 5532 Bayberry. Right. You don't want to go. Okay. Uh, De Barbara Klemp. B A R B A R A K R E M as in Mary, P as in Paul. Mm -hmm. I live at 5527 Bayberry, and um, I'd just like to um, reiterate what my neighbors have, um, have said. And um, I don't feel how, I don't see how putting um, a few lights or a couple of cameras up is going to solve the issues that, um, that we've been having. The, the noise is so loud on the weekend, I can't hear my own television. So I'm, I'm a night person, so I'm up at night watching TV, and I can tell you they're mostly gone about 1 o'clock in the morning, but do I have to hear that until 1 a.m.? So I, I, I'm totally against this. Maybe if, if there's some reason that we can't stop it, maybe she sh should have to pay for one or two police officers to be stationed at the, um, at the store for those hours on Saturday, Friday and Saturday night so that we don't have to continue to go through this. And thank you, that's all I have to say. Thank you, thank you. All right, uh, the fellow who writes worse than me, 55 <laughs> million don't, don't, let, don't let him fool you, he, he writes worse than anybody. In crayon. A-N-T-H-O-N-Y, Constantino, C-O-S. T-A-N-T-I-N-O. Okay, what I would like to s say first is that I'd like to echo everything that's been said, of course, including what you guys have said in the beginning, you and you and you, concerning the problems that we are dealing with presently. And the only thing that's going to happen is going to be increasing because we have a community which is adjacent to this problem. If this gas station had seven, eight uh, acres of land ar around it, we would not be here. They would have the right to do whatever the heck they want. But we are 55 and old, and we are people that may go to bed early, late, don't want any noise. That's why we have a 55 and old community. And I hope that you will vote accordingly as if you were there. If you lived there, would you like to have this noise and this problem? I don't think you would. I don't think you would, period. And I thank you for listening. Steve Albright. Uh, Elizabeth. Uh, Al okay. And that's what we had for courtesy of the floor. If anybody else from the group that wasn't signed up, if they want to get up and talk, come up, state your name, and spell it for her. I just, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm Frank. Uh, Groller, G R O L L E R. And I echo everything that everybody said back there. 
but also in consideration besides where the, you're talking about the one side where you can't see out of the building, what about the back of the building? Yeah. There's no cameras back there. They can come up and up the hill and go on the neighbor's things. Why couldn't, uh, even, even if this gets turned down, why couldn't the township force sheets to put a fence in the back there so nobody can gum up the back to the neighbor's property in the back? That borders sheets, if you know what I'm saying. That's something we can certainly consider, sir. Okay. We, we, we can speak to them about that. But my biggest concern is if they introduce more cameras on the back of the property, they're probably going to have to introduce more lighting. And the lighting is going to reflect on the back of exactly. your development. Yes. So my concern is we may be asking for more than we're, we're bargaining for. Okay. So we have to put a lot of thought into what we're going to ask them for and how we're going to do this and be strategic about things because the last thing I want to do is create another problem on top of right, what we feel are existing if they problems. Don't, if they don't put the cameras in the back with the more light. I agree with you. A physical barrier would, it's not going to stop everyone no. and they're not going to be able to build, you know, it's not going to be a fort. But right. maybe right. if there's a physical barrier in the immediate proximity of the store itself, right. that'll deter them from coming up your bank into exactly. your development. Exactly. And that's something we can certainly discuss with them and, and see if they would be agreeable to it. Okay. As, because there will be a c conditions attached to this. Okay. Okay, thank you. I appreciate your time. Yes. Sandra, S-A-N-D-R-A, Schwartz, S-C-H-W-A-R-Z. I live at 5525 Briar Lane. I've been there almost six years. And I agree with everything that they said, except there's one thing they didn't mention. On a Friday night or Saturday night, I would go down to Sheets to gas up my car. I went three times. I don't go anymore. I'm scared to go down at that time. It's at dark. I go to bed around 10 o'clock. So it's before 10 o'clock actually had young kids with the loud cars, the loud music, and that actually blocked me from getting into taking my get, getting my gas. I drove away, went someplace else for gas. They do do it deliberately. They do it deliberately. That's one thing they didn't mention. And it's handy for me to go down there because I don't really like to drive that much. I can't go down for gas unless I go down during the day. That's it. Thank you. Any other comments from the floor? Any more comments from the board? Yes, I have one question. As this is only a transfer of a license at this point, Am I confused, or did we get a definite answer? There will be no indoor open containers of alcohol in this building. That's correct. Which means they shouldn't be open outside in the parking lot either. Well, they're not permitted to be open outside of the parking lot. That's correct. So the whole thought is somebody can run in, get a six-pack, head home. That's correct. And or wherever they're going. It is not meant to be drinking on the lot. That's correct. But I disagree. In her earlier testimony, she stated that fact, but then she retracted it well, and said there's a chance. Get cleared up here. Right. Well, and I, I didn't retract it. Okay. This is, if, if anything changed by law, they would have to reevaluate their policy. Okay. If the liquor code said they have to have 35 seats, they'd add five additional seats. Um, so it really depends on what the liquor control board come back, comes back and say. They don't want to sell for on-premises consumption. They would prefer to be primarily takeout and have their seats for those who are eating um, from their, their menu on premises. Uh, they don't want to have on premises consumption. Well, they can always, even if the LCB sets a standard that says they, they can't make sheets have their patrons drink on site. They sheets can make can sheets allow for it to be yeah. on premises consumption. Now, now they have liquor control board has come out and said that a restaurant liquor licensee is permitted to limit on-premises consumption. 
they've, like I said, they've not come out and expressly said they have to allow it, which is, you know, what would change Sheets' policy if they absolutely had to have it. They would, by law, since they have to, but they would limit that. Quick question, if I may. Of the uh, sheet stores in Pennsylvania, I, approximately how many would you say there are? Uh, even without liquor licenses? Yeah, either with or without. Tough for me to say. I don't know off the top of my head, but I want to say there are about 400. And how many of them do you believe have liquor licenses? Over 150, but under 200. And how many of them allow, allow consumption of beverages on in the premises, in the building? Today, none. They, they did away with that policy. They let <coughs> each of their locations know. And now not one sheet's location in Pennsylvania sells for on-premises consumption. <coughs> and, and, and I just want to reiterate, this was just a very recent policy. Um, within the last month, they just decided this as a company. Uh, they evaluated each of their stores. The ones that they did have on-premises consumption, it was incredibly limited. Um, it was around 2% of their total alcohol sales was on-premises consumption. Um, and so they decided to just do away with that policy to make it across the board at each of their locations. I think you can appreciate where we're coming from because Absolutely. if this isn't allowed in the parking lot, they, you know, and if they're allowed to drink inside the store, it's just going to take it to the parking lot and then in turn it's going to take it to the street. And I agree with you. And that's why Sheets has said no on-premises consumption and certainly none outside as that's illegal. Any other questions? Yeah, last comment I have. I think we all learned a little something here tonight. I think the first one is that, and I know the chief paid attention to this, that on Friday and Saturday nights it wouldn't hurt to have a little more patrol up in that area and try and get rid of this problem for these residents with, with uh, what's going on up there. I know I've seen it, you know, stopping there for gas or whatever Friday and Saturday nights. Uh, it, it's there. There's no question. Uh, police can't be everywhere, but, but maybe we can get the chief to do a little extra patrol there now and then and solve that problem. The other thing I learned is when your owners come in, if this passes to transfer this license, please make them aware they need to be a better neighbor. I, I have taken notes. It's they they the need first to be a better neighbor. Uh, they need to go up there and talk to these neighbors, you know, and, and uh, do better. There's no question. You know, I've seen the trash stop there, too. I didn't know people were running through the neighborhoods on the hill up there behind, but, but things have to be done to be a better neighbor, without question. And, that, and even if this doesn't go through as a liquor sales, they still need to be a better neighbor for, for what they have there. there there's no reason the, those neighbors should have, have to deal with this trash. I, I did take a note on the trash as well as the, uh, the shrubbery or the, the yard. Mm -hmm. um, that's something they'll, dis they'll have to discuss with their landlord. Um, their trash and the maintenance is typically upheld by the landlord. Um, so that's something they're going to have to reach out and yeah, hopefully get their landlord to have participated. We, we definitely need, need a little bit better work with the, in the neighborhood, so to speak. Okay, that, thank you. That's all I have, those comments. Any other comments? Can I, can I say my name? Yes. You have to come up and say your name again. And <laughs> Angela Patterson. Um, when I first moved into the development, now I've been there almost seven years. We were so excited to have Sheets because my son went to Penn State, you know, Sheets is the best, you know, to go and get breakfast. So my husband and I, when we would be going on the road somewhere, we'd stop and we'd get a breakfast. So this is something I think you need to share with the owners, is, since it is a family owned business, I don't eat there anymore. Because as, as uh, you know, as the years passed, um, it, it really got dirty. And I, you'd go in there, and there would be papers all over the floor. It looked dirty. And um, I know people who got sick. And I, I just think you should bring this back to them. Because many times I thought I should really contact them and, and let them know this. But um, you know, I, I just I <coughs> get my gas there, but I do, not, I do not eat there. And I won't eat there. Um, but that is my concern. If you, and, and I mean, you know, Let's face it, what do they pay their employees? I'm sure it's minimum wage. 
So we're going to be putting all of this trust into these people, all right, when they can't even keep the place indoor clean, and then they're going to monitor, you know, people at 145 in the morning that could be drunk or they're selling alcohol to. I just don't have a lot of faith in that. So that's just my concern. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Any other comment? Hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Ginder. Yes. Commissioner Warren? No. Commissioner Clary? Nay. Commissioner Marks? No. Commissioner Sloniker? Nay. And President Hauer? No. Motion is defeated. Five nays, one aye. Um, we'll move on to courtesy of the floor. Um, Yeah, if you were only here for the sheets, we can give you a minute to get out. Yeah. Although you, you might want well, to, you might want to stay. Out. <laughs> you might want to stay for the first. Uh, yeah, the first ordinance noise. might be of yours. It's on noise. It's on noise. You can. Uh... You drive fast. Take your time. There you go. <laughs> Drink. You don't want to stay either? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you really want to, but. <laughs> you got a thing. I got a thing to do. She first told us that they would absolutely not serve alcohol on the premise. But then she retracted that and said, but, but. Okay. But if Lori and Daniel, they're still not forced. No semblance of the Silence, please. My name is Lorianne Fainel. I live at 3107 North 3rd Street in Whitehall Township. I'm in Hawkendaqua. I'm here tonight to talk to you about something that's very important to me in my, my community. Cars, running a bus's red lights. This has been an ongoing issue on my street from the growing tree up to even where I'm at and other areas in this township. Apparently, citizens in our township think it's okay to run a bus's red lights and not even think twice about it. It's sickening. We need to start doing announcements, public safety announcements from the police in the township to remind these citizens they cannot overrun a bus. Now, I have contacted many people regarding this because people had the perception because the bus is not in the middle of an intersection, they could still make that turn. It's false. All turns have to stop in the middle of an intersection unless there's a barrier, a grassy area, or something to block it. We have kids that cross diagonal. They don't come until the bus stops and those lights are flashing. They're assuming these cars are stopping. And I just had a recent one on March 27th. That's not including the video that I made that I have shared with the mayor from last year when the bus had cars running its red lights. We need to do something as a township, as a whole, and with the district. Mayor, I asked you for a watch children sign. You wouldn't commit to it. You wouldn't commit that's to a stop sign. Just that's listen. That's not true. You that's what you told me, documented. That's not true. Yes, you did. You said you would not commit to a stop sign. You were comfortable with the speed limit signs. So I came up with a compromise. Since we're worried about our bus stops, there is actual signage that you can make where you put the speed limit in the sign and you can have caution children, like caution on top, and I, I can show you a diagram of it. I think this would be a, a solution on these streets where our bus stops are located to remind these people there's children getting on these buses. I think that's something we really need to do. And not just with the school district. I volunteer and say, you know, I'll go out in the middle of the road to protect my kids or any of those kids at the bus stop from getting hit by a car. This intersection at Third and Iron is terrible. We need something done at this intersection. Put a stop sign. Put the signs are gone for speed. But it doesn't stop cars running these red lights on a bus. I mean, it's sickening. These are our kids. Chief. Chief. I'm 
not and I'm not aware of the bus the buses at the uh, school district but do they or do they not have cameras on the buses they do. okay not so, all so of them I, hold, hold my particular bus does hold, not have a camera aren't they required to have cameras on there was a state <coughs> law passed that all the buses what I from when I talked to Sherry Bell I, I will let you speak everything that oh, you want I'm sorry Go ahead. talking to the chief right now oh I thought you were talking to me sorry. No, I was talking to the chief I, I, so it's it's not a state law that they have to have the cameras on it now because but I know most of the buses now do have it only for this for this very reason. I think it's the retroactive buses. I think as far as I don't think they're required to go back, but I. Can but all new I buses, all okay. Back. So um, again, um, Lori Ann, I'm sorry. Um, I think the issue here. I think the first issue is, and, and we can talk about a sign, but. The first issue, I think, would be go to the school board and and make sh and ask them if they've. Actually, they referred me to the chief in here. At one point, I spoke well, to Mr. Shippert over the phone, okay. and I said, "This has been an, an ongoing thing." And like I said, it's amazing to me how these people in our township do not know the bus guidelines. Please, for the sake of our children, do a safety announcement to remind these people what the law is. Well, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing that they don't That's know all. the law. However. Um, most of them, even if they knew the law, if they're l running late for work, they're just going to go around that bus anyway. Well, you know what? It's so better to do a public safety on protect a child. These lives matter on this that, bus. I'm not going to have a kid get hit at my bus stop because these people want to run the Reds. Right. Well, I don't think this is our bus stop for our kids. I don't think you standing out in the middle of the street is a, is a safety issue. You know what? I'll get a safety vest, a helmet, and whatever you want to protect those kids because that's what the type of mother I am to protect. I, get I treat it. those kids, all those kids at the bus stop, if they're my own. I get it. But my, my point is, is that the. Um, the school district controls the school buses, and I think the school buses should have their have those cameras on them. I know I agree. every district. And I agree, and I 100 percent agree. And unfortunately, our bus does not have a camera. And I could tell you, I know where the offender lives. I know his name, and everything. You know, I'm lucky I'm not going to go up there and tell him off because I came this close to doing it. Okay. I mean, that's how I feel strongly about this: is that people think they can overrun that bus making that turn. No, they can't. Um, the other thing I'm just going to speak on. There's going to be a young lady. Mr. President, may I just respond yes, to the first issue? It, during our initial conversations, I believe I told you that it wasn't felt that the watch children or children playing signs were particularly effective. When we sat down with the uh, traffic control group that makes decisions on this, we authorized a change in the speed limit and to put those signs up. Yeah, but you also didn't have me participate in that meeting either that I've asked you repeatedly, let me participate in that meeting so I can, you can actually physically hear from me and not just through you. So, I mean, there's, I I've asked you multiple times, The police department Mayor. has heard quite a bit about this from you, as has our staff. I, I'm Lorianne. very vocal. I'm very I, vocal I understand that, and I respect that. I'm just trying to make sure that we understand that, in fact, two of the three requests you made were honored and because of state law, our engineer, our police department have indicated that we will not be able to qualify for stop signs at okay. that area. I understand the stop sign part of it, Mayor. Right. But my concern is you won't even put up a watch children sign. So I'm saying to you, there's actual signs it, out there that we can compromise, possibly, that we're, you know what, you have a daycare on the street, growing tree. There's tons of kids going on that bus. I mean, I had a parent actually that I just spoke to yesterday, one of them that lives on the 3000 block of North 3rd Street, and she was actually telling me how when the cars come flying down our street, how she actually went out into the back of the bus because these cars are coming so close. I mean, that's ridiculous. They shouldn't be having that. I mean, this is actually a parent that does have her kid go to the growing tree at times and does pick up as a parent. So to physically herself saying to me, you know what, I've had to go out in the middle of the road. So it's not just me that feels that way. Can I ask this question now? If you had a, if you had a sign up for watch children, why would that be even a deterrent for somebody who's passing a school bus with flashing red lights and a gate? And okay, so my theory is with the watch children sign. People have different perceptions if people are going to pay attention to these things. So trust me, I've had White House police tell me, nope, people don't pay attention. So that's not not necessarily true. I think having something that stands out. Hey, this is a bus stop. There's kids here. I mean, this is a heavily populated area of kids from the growing tree up to where I live. And that's not including some that may live north of me. So, I mean, people physically having to go in the middle of the roadway to stop cars running reds, I mean, mm -hmm. if that's what people are going to take them out, I'm willing to do it. Give me a citation to do it. 
because you know what? I want to protect my kids. I don't want them getting hit. I don't want any other kids off the cross the street getting hit because these people think they can make these turns. No, they can't do it. I mean, I called the governor's office. They sent me to the, the Department of Transportation that does with bus regulations. I spoke in great length with that woman. At any point in time, at that four-way intersection, can those cars make that turn? And the answer was no. People think because they're greater than 10 feet, without a barrier, that, hey, I can make that turn. The answer is no. And I've also called multiple legal as well to find out, and the answer is no. All I'm saying is that we need to have something to say, watch children, because these are bus stops with kids, and I would hate for anybody to get seriously injured or yet killed. And, and as I said, Lorianne, those, those signs have been authorized. The watch children sign? The Just children the playing limit. something. No, it's going to be both of those will be. Happening. I was under which one? Because the last one that I saw this, I saw speed limit. I didn't see the one that you approved the watch children one. Is that is somewhere else in we'll, the minutes? We'll sit down with uh, Mr. Bundra tomorrow if you'd like to come in. And yeah, to my knowledge. He'll explain to you where the locations of the signs will be. I didn't, I was, I'm so then I apologize. I was not where you approved the watch children <coughs> sign. Because last thing I saw was the speed limit signs. I did not see the watch children sign approved. I, I respect your passion, and we all value your children also. So we're doing the best we can to assist in that problem. And I just have one more thing to say. You know, as a woman that has experienced domestic violence, this letter that you're the woman that's going to be speaking here, no victim of domestic violence should be punished the way this letter is written. I am ashamed of this township for this letter that's written for that, this victim. I don't know all the facts, but this letter, as a woman, no one should be suspended being a victim of domestic violence from the fire department. Shame on you. Can we see the letter? Well, are you for? Uh, I'll read the address. Okay, just a second. I know there was one. Um, what was that, Macy or Mary? Macy. Macy. Yeah. Okay, you're up next. So <laughs> go ahead. Do you want the letter also? Uh, yeah. <coughs> Here's the letter. Um, Macy Hoffman. I actually live in Catasauqua, but I'm a Whitehall firefighter. Oh, okay. <coughs> I'm a volunteer Whitehall firefighter for Station 37. I've been a firefighter for four years total, which includes two years in Whitehall. <coughs> Firefighting runs in my family, as my dad and my brother are also Whitehall firefighters. Last week, I received a letter from Ashley Nishan, I don't know exactly know her name, human resources officer, that I am suspended as of April 1st, 2019. Unfortunately, in my personal life, I have a current PFA against the father of my son, Jonathan Ragitz, since October 2018. He also is a firefighter of Whitehall Fire Department, but at Station 40. In November 2018, there was an incident prior to the Firemen's Association meeting that we both attended that he approached me, which is against the PFA, and we started arguing, which substantially parted, and the night's move forward uneventfully. In January, I had notified two officers from Station 40 that I would be attending the associ association meeting at hockey and asked that they would be notified John, hoping in the event he would not come due to violation of the PFA. He came anyways. There happened to be a Whitehall police officer at the meeting to speak, so I approached him and he called the police and John was then later arrested at the meeting. According to the letter I received, I am suspended, quote, until you can provide proof to Whitehall Township that you resolve your domestic situation and admissibly, and the PFA has been lifted, end quote. I feel I've been unjustly suspended due to the fact that I revealed this information to Chief and to Ashley, which then started an investigation. If this would not have been brought to their attention, I would not be here tonight. I would like to continue my service in the Whitehall Fire Department and would appreciate if you could reconsider, reconsider the current suspension. suspension. I'm, I'm still reading here. <laughs> I, I listened to you, but now I got to...
Mr. Mayor, is Jonathan Regitz still a member of our fire department? To my knowledge, he has also been, well, I don't know that I want to comment on that at this point because of the nature of the matter. I would move that we have an executive yeah. session after the meeting concerning this. Thank you for your concern. I, I appreciate you coming forward. We're going to have an executive session because personnel matters should be held at an executive session anyway. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Virginia is it Toten. Yes, you come up. Oh, if you want to wait till that gets to, till we get that on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. Yep. And <coughs> Tom Lindemann, same thing. Yes. You wait. Okay. And then the last person on here is Mike uh, Mick D. Good evening, Mick D, 647 West Union Street in Whitehall. I'm here on uh, wearing two hats. One is for Representative Jeannie McNeil. I am her chief of staff. The mayor mentioned earlier about our senior fair, uh, which we will have Friday, April 26th. I know he mentioned it. A lot of people are talking at Whitehall Mall. It is uh, co-sponsored by Representative or uh, Senator Lisa Boscola. Uh, it's a big event. We have close to 100 vendors. Last year we had between two and 300 seniors. Uh, we provide free screenings, free health screenings, free refresh refreshments, and we have a whole lot of door prizes. So it's a great event that I want everybody aware of. Uh, all completely free uh, from 9 a.m. <coughs> excuse me, 9 a.m. to 12 noon, Friday, April 26th at the White Hall Mall. Uh, the second thing I want to bring up. Um, there's a tract of land that is currently owned by Lehigh County. It is part of the Jordan Creek Parkway. And for years, and it has to be transferred to Whitehall Township by state law. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, we have tried to do this for several years. Several uh, different hurdles have faced us. But I'm happy to report that today on third and final passage, uh, the resolution passed 198 to zero. And now heads over to the Senate. Senator Boscola had introduced a similar bill last year, which unanimously passed the Senate. So we're assuming it's going to pass the Senate unanimously. It'll be head, headed back to the House for a final vote, and then will be signed by the governor. So it looks like after several years of trying, we're finally going to get this land into the uh, uh, hands of Whitehall Township to control it. It's part of the Jordan Creek Parkway. It's for recreational purposes, but uh, Leah County has been trying to give this land to Whitehall for several years, so I uh, just wanted to pass that along. And uh, finally, just as a resident, um, I was uh, very good friends with Jeff Gerhardt. He's a former neighbor of mine, and um, I know, um, uh, and I also knew uh, Ulysses Connor Jr., as we knew him, uh, from my involvement with the <coughs> Ironton Rail Trail. And uh, I just want to pass along my condolences to the families. And Whitehall lost two very good servants in the last couple of weeks. So thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate that, Mick. Thank you. Thank you, Mick. That's it. That's it. When, when will we be seeing what piece of land this is? Do we know now? Um, yeah, this, uh, Frank, you're more familiar with this, I think, than am I. Or it's the one of, I don't know which one. Which track this is? She's hiding her own. No offense, Mick. Play. We're a little gun shy we're about little, giving yeah. being given property. We, we we keep getting old maids here from the state. <laughs> is there a wall? Yeah. <laughs> we're not saying it's is not good. We're, we yeah. just get an old yeah. maid thrown at us once. We're not gonna we're not gonna make sure that uh, we're gonna make sure that that's actually true. We don't. Yeah. We're not gonna take your word for it. Where is it, Lee? The Jordan Greenway. I got you. You're there. Okay. Is it attached to something we own now? It is now. It is now. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. The Senate did not vote. <coughs> yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, public hearing and voting on ordinances. Bill number 13-2019, an ordinance amending Chapter 6 to create a new article, Article 9 to address unnecessary noise as a nuisance and to prohibit unnecessary noise after certain hours. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. 
Do I have a second? I'll second. Comments or questions from the board? Comments or questions from the floor? Hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Warren? Allowed, aye. Allowed, aye. Commissioner Clary? Aye. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Marks? Yes. And President Howard? Yes. Motion <coughs> Bill passes six ayes, zero nays. Just so everyone knows, Whitehall Township now has a noise ordinance. Thank you. I was, I was waiting for the applause. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Bill number 14-2019, an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a proposal for 2019 concrete curb and sidewalk improvements, contract number 19-03R, in accordance with section 3.20 in the Home Rule Charter, which requires <coughs> authorization of acquisitions in excess of $25,000 by ordinance. Do I have a motion? <coughs> I'll move. Do I have a second? I'll second. Be before you vote, I just want to pass along, if I may, that there were two bids led on this. Uh, initially, when we put it out, we got really high bids. We, we rebid it and we saved about uh, a third of the cost from the first bid. So I think we've done the best we can with this project. Great. Any other comments or questions? Comments from the floor? Hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Marks? Yes. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. Commissioner Clary? Aye. Commissioner Warren? Aye. And President Howard? Yes. Bill passes six ayes, zero nays. Bill number 15-2019, an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a proposal for purchase of uniforms for the Whitehall Township Police Department sworn law enforcement officials. Contract number 19-11, in accordance with section 3.20 in the Home Rule Charter, which requires authorization of acquisitions in excess of $25,000 by ordinance. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Comments or questions from the board? Comments or questions from the floor? <coughs> Hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Marks? Yes. Commissioner Sloniker? <coughs> aye. Commissioner Clary? Aye. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. And President Howard? Yes. Well, um, yeah. Bill passes six ayes, zero nays. Bill number 16-2019, an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a proposal for the purchase of one 2020 Mack dump truck, cab, and chassis for the Public Works Department in accordance with section 3.20 in the Home Rule Charter, which requires authorization of acquisitions in excess of $25,000 by ordinance. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Questions from the board? Yeah, I just want to make a comment. Uh, we have a 1974 Mack dump truck back there that this is replacing. That's phenomenal. I was a wee little guy when we purchased that in 74. So kudos to the, our mechanics who kept a machine that's used that hard running for over 45 years. That's pretty amazing stuff. Nah, I'm not even <laughs> that's all. What were you doing in 1974, Mr. Ginder? <laughs> <laughs> Just getting out of the Army for me and not. And we thank you for your service, brother. Any other comments or questions? Any questions from the floor? Hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Marks? Yes. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Clary? Aye. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. And President Howard? Yes. Bill passes six ayes, zero nays. Bill number 17-2019, an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a proposal for the purchase of a new 2019 Caterpillar model 930M wheel loader in accordance with section 3.20 in the Home Rule Charter, which requires authorization of acquisitions in excess of $25,000 by ordinance. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. Second? I'll second. Questions from the board? Uh, Jack, this was in part half is being purchased with a recycling grant. Correct. So for the residents out there, recycling does pay. Uh, the state is 
yeah. giving us half the cost of this this dump loader, this loader, and if we didn't have a recycling program, we'd be we'd be shouldering the full burden cost of that this piece of equipment. Absolutely. So thank you. Any other comments? Comments or questions from the floor? Hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Clary? Aye. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. <coughs> Commissioner Martins? Yes. President Howard? Yes. Bill passes six ayes, zero nays. Bill number 18-2019, an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a proposal to retain a government relations advocate to assist, advise, and aggressively pursue government funding for the public safety building and other such capital projects and land acquisitions to be determined and approved by the Board of Commissioners in accordance with Section 3.20 in the Home Rule Charter, which requires authorization of acquisitions in excess of $25,000 by ordinance. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Questions from the board? Questions how from long, I'm sorry, How long is the contract for this? Like the, the term of the contract is a year, but we have a 30-day out, so we're basically going month to month. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Any other comments or questions from the board? Comments or questions from the floor? Hearing none, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Sloniker, aye. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Marks? Yes. Commissioner Clary? Aye. Commissioner Warren? Aye. President Howard? Yes. Bill passes six ayes, zero nays. Bill number 19-2019, an ordinance deferring the required installation of curbing and sidewalks along the <coughs> Reliance Street frontage of 4157 